Okay, so let's get going. So sections from SketchUp to Photoshop. Okay, so that's what we're working on today. Um, just like last class, we're gonna go ahead and start with our cabin. Okay, so this is exactly the same thing that we that I was working with last class. Okay, you guys have all seen this. Can we turn off the light real quick, please? All right, so this is the same cabin you guys have seen the last couple classes. Um, when cutting a section inside SketchUp, it's gonna be, for the most part, exactly the same as cutting a floor plan, okay? We're just gonna kind of tweak it just a little bit. So as kind of a refresher, last class we created our floor plan, okay? We created a floor plan by uh, starting by creating a box, okay? We created a box like so. We took that box and we used the push and pull tool to um, push up that box four feet to establish a four foot ground plane for our, for our floor plan. Okay, as we all know, floor plans are typically cut at four feet. Okay, which is why we do this. We're giving SketchUp a location to be able to cut that floor plan. And if we go over to uh, let's see, View Toolbars, we're going to go ahead and turn on the large tool set. All right, just like we did last class. We're going to then click on Close. And then to cut the floor plan, all right, this is just a quick refresher for I think there's maybe one or two people that weren't here last class. We're going to go down to the bottom right hand corner and we're gonna click on section plane. You'll notice there's the little symbol for section plane, all right? We're gonna go ahead and click on that and we're gonna bring the plane to the top of the cube that we just created, okay? By clicking on the top of that cube, notice that we have the blue uh, rectangle around our section plane, okay? That's telling us that we're creating a nice true uh, floor plan that's parallel to the ground, okay? So we're gonna click on the top of that box that we just created and you'll notice that it cuts us a nice floor plan at four feet. Okay, so that's just a quick little refresher from last for how we created the floor plan last class. Feel free to check out the video on Canvas to for any extra little bit of help. Okay, so to cut a section, it's going to be the exact same way. I'm just going to hit Control Z so that we can go back to where we were before. Um, you don't necessarily need the reference box if you have a nice flat wall on the side of your building. Uh, you can use that as well. I could also use maybe like a flat beam, but since I have the box, we'll go ahead and just use that. Okay, so I'm going to click on the section plane and I'm going to bring it to the side of my box that I just created, okay? Notice that the boundary of that section plane changed to red, okay? So we know that um, we're cutting this section uh, perpendicular to, to the wall, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and click on the side of that box. Notice that it initially just cuts a section of only the box. I'm going to click on the move tool all right, so I'm gonna click on the move tool. I'm gonna to grab that section plane and I'm going to move it inside my building, okay? So when you guys do this, you guys need to ask yourself the question, uh, you know, what are you trying to show for the section, okay? Ideally, you wanna be able to find a place inside the building that, you know, kind of shows the most drama, okay? So maybe you have a couple spaces in the section that have some height. Okay, some of you guys have kind of that A-frame building. I think I've seen a couple of you. Uh, so you'll probably have a fairly typical section, being that you're gonna have that, basically that A-frame the, uh, the entire length of the building. But some of you guys may have you know, a variety of different sections that you can show. Uh, for my building, you can see that you know, for the most part, all of the sections are fairly typical. There's not a whole lot of difference between them, minus some of the interior spaces. So uh, I'm gonna go through and kind of find what I think uh, represents my spaces best, which I'm gonna say is probably about what I have right here, okay? The reason why I'm picking that is because it shows kind of the foundations and the walls of my building. It shows some of the frames of the windows. It also shows the roof, shows the same thing in the middle and the end along with our transom windows, but it also shows uh, the volume of the spaces inside along with uh, some of my interior walls behind. So by showing some of those interior walls uh, in your section, that allows you to be able to define materials for, the, for those walls, okay? You may not have started thinking about those yet, but whether or not they're maybe brick or CMU block or just paint, that's completely up to you. But by showing it in your section, uh, kind of like an elevation, you're able to provide yourself that opportunity to show some materiality in your building. And unfortunately, 
unlike an elevation, uh, there's not a lot of opportunities to do that in section because you're not showing the exterior of the building. Okay, so think about that when you guys are choosing what section you guy, uh, what section you want to uh, show. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click right here. I'm going to choose that as my section, and then to set up the section, I'm going to go over to my camera. I'm going to go to standard views, and let's see. I think it's front. Nope, not front. Let's try, maybe it's left. Nope, of course not left. <laughs> it's always the very last one that I try every single time. And I think I would know this by now after, after doing it a dozen times. Uh, okay, so we know if it's not left, it's gonna be right. All right, so there's our section. So uh, just like last class, our section is, ooh, that auto save. God, I fall for it every single time. And it always stops the lecture for about three minutes while it, this computer saves the the file. All right, well, we'll give the auto save a second, then we'll fix that. But the next step would be someone someone fill me in on what the next step is. We notice this is in perspective. What what would we do to get this out of perspective? Change the camera to parallel. Yeah, change the camera to parallel projection. So you're always going to want to do that for any section, any floor plan, uh, or any elevation. Okay, <laughs> to be able to get them to be pure true elevations or sections or floor plans. All right, spinning wheel should be almost done. Dun, dun, dun. There's got to be a pause in every one of my videos because of this, probably for the last two weeks. OK, so let's see. Let's go up to, let's get rid of that. Let's go to preferences. Let's change our auto save. It's going to be under general. I'm just going to turn off autosave, and now we're good to go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go up to camera. We're going to go over to uh, click on parallel projection. Okay, that gives us our nice pure section. All right, I'm going to then go over to scenes, and I'm going to save my scene. Last class, I made the floor plan a little bit too big for for my for my view. Okay, ideally, uh, I would have liked to have the shadow be inclusive inside my scene. So I'm just gonna kind of zoom out in the section just a little bit. Keep in mind that when you're kind of choosing how big your uh, your section is gonna be, about the the width of your screen or the area that you can see on your screen is, is what SketchUp is going to export. So that's gonna be the size of your, of your future rendering, okay? So I think where it is right now it is good. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with that. Maybe just uh, zoom it in just a tiny bit. And then once I like it, I'm going to go up to view. We're going to turn off uh, section planes. We're going to turn off axes and guides as usual. OK, I want to get rid of my, my little guy. I'm going to end up putting a real person in there here shortly. All right, and then I'm going to go over to scenes, and I'm going to save this as a new scene. Ideally, you guys should have a scene. Probably by now, you should have a scene for your floor plan for all four elevations. Uh, your section and then by next Monday you'll have scenes for your perspectives okay so you'll start to you'll start to create your uh, your perspective or your exterior perspective for the final for the very final class assignment okay so that's gonna be our scene we're gonna use for the section okay now the next couple steps I think we're all pretty familiar with okay so we can go ahead and knock those out fairly quickly the first view we're going to export is going to be the hidden line, which I believe uh, is what we have at this moment. Okay, so I'm going to go to File and Export 2D Graphic, and I'll go through this pretty quickly because we should all be experts. 16B. I'm going to go ahead and call this one Yosemite House. Hidden line. Okay, and go ahead and click on Export. All right, I'm going to do, uh, next I'm going to do a shadows, all right? So I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go over to shadows. I'm gonna turn the shadows on. And one thing to keep in mind, just like when you're doing your floor plans, is that SketchUp creates the shadows uh, as if the building is literally cut in half. So we have to kind of keep that in mind. We'll uh, do your best to uh, either alter them inside SketchUp the best that you can, or we can alter them inside Photoshop. 
another thing that just popped into my mind is um, you may encounter, you know, a lot of this, or for some of you, this may have been your first SketchUp model. When you cut your section, it may be a little sloppy. That's okay. Uh, I, I absolutely did it myself, probably my first five or 10 SketchUp models. And even to this day, I, sometimes I still have some loose ends. It doesn't always work out as having just these nice, just perfect shapes in your sections. Sometimes you're missing like a bottom line and you not you don't get quite what you want. Um, don't, uh, don't fret over that too much. We can fix that in Photoshop. We can, you know, fix some of those little, you know, those little pieces inside Photoshop, okay? So uh, don't spend half a class trying to fix some of those little issues, okay? We'll just move on uh, from here. The most important part is that we have a nice, complete 3D model for the perspective next class, okay? That's where we really need it to, uh, to look good is from the exterior of the building, okay? So if you need help with that later, just, just let me know, okay? So we turned on shadows, okay? And uh, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the time in the day to be able to get uh, kind of something a little bit more dramatic. Unfortunately for my building, uh, I'm probably not gonna be able to show too much shadow. You, for, for those of you that have maybe uh, other parts of your building in the background where shadows could cast on that, uh, that is good. Other than that, we, don't, we actually don't really want any shadows on the interior of the building, okay? We're gonna do some work inside Photoshop a little bit later that will kind of suggest that light is coming through the windows, but we're not gonna really uh, suggest too many shadows. So I think for my building, realistically, I probably wouldn't have hardly anything at all. Um, maybe a little bit on the beams outside. So maybe something like that, okay? So, but really all I'm after is just some of the little bits of shadow on, on the outside of the building, okay? I'm going to correct, um, I'm gonna correct the interior shadows in Photoshop, although when I turn off the edges, that will actually fix uh, some of those interior shadows, okay? So I'm gonna go back up to Styles, I'm going to click on Edit, I'm going to turn off Edges, okay? Uh, let's see, that turned off edges. Why did that not turn off all? Oh, because I have to turn off section cuts, okay? So I'm gonna go over to view. I'm gonna turn off section cuts, and that will actually give you uh, a majority of the shadow, actually all of the shadows that you need without too many extraneous interior shadows, okay? So you have to turn off section cuts and edges to get the look that you're going for. All right, so go file, export. I just realized something else is that I didn't change the, uh, I did not change the size of the previous option, so I'll go back and change that. So I'm gonna to go to 6,000 pixels. I'm gonna hit OK. Let's call this Yosemite House Shadows. Okay, export. All right, so I'm gonna turn back, I'm gonna turn edges back on. I'm going to go up and turn on section uh, cuts. All right, so that gives us our section back. I'm going to turn off shadows. I'm going to export this one more time as the hidden line view just to make sure that my pixels are exactly the same for both of my views. Okay, so file, export 2D graphic, and let's just override our original hidden line. All right, you guys may do x ray for this one. You actually. Uh, let's just see what happens on mine. I do have some rooms on the other side of uh, on the other side of this wall, so this actually may be kind of a beneficial place to use uh, X-ray. Okay, so I'm going to click on Edit. I'm going to go over to let's see where was it? Over to Select. No, I'm sorry. Edit. Is it this guy right here? No, oh, I forgot where X. Oh, it's this one right here. Edge settings. Where the heck did X-ray go? I thought I saw it in the style. I always, I always end up forgetting where where it goes. Anyways, I'll I'll come back to X-ray. We've gone over it. You guys will, you guys will find it if you feel that it's a a liable or it ends up being a good a good view for your for your for your cabin. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and just export one more sketchy line. So I'm gonna go over to sketchy line or sketchy edges. I'm gonna pick my 
Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and pick that one right there. That looks like a pretty good one. Let's turn off section cuts. I'm sorry. I want to turn off section planes. Okay. So then we're turn off section planes and I will export this as my final view. So file export 2D graphic and let's call this Yosemite house sketchy lines. Okay. Don't forget that you know, you guys may export like three views, maybe two views, and maybe five. Go through and actually, we've only looked at just a couple of the views that are in SketchUp, but if you haven't done so yet, go through and look at the other ones. You may be quite surprised that you might find a nice little layer that you can add to your to one of the views that you're working on. Okay, so let's export that. And as soon as we're done, we will go ahead and jump right over into Photoshop. Okay. So we're going to go open to file, we're going to go to open, and we're going to open up our first image, which is going to be the hidden line view. Let's go down to today's folder. Oh, look at that. Just one more folder. Yeah. Just one more folder. We're almost, it's almost summertime. Almost summertime. All right. So let's open up uh, Yosemite House hidden line. We're going to click on open. All right, that's going to give us our first view. This this looks pretty good. This gives us plenty of room to create our ground plan and to insert a nice background image into our section. Okay, so from here I'm going to go to File Place, and I'm going to put the shadows on top of that. All right, so there's our shadows, and let's um, return this uh, blending mode to multiply. So that looks pretty good. Although I think the reality is I'm probably going to end up turning off or getting getting rid of most of those shadows. I'll I'll play with those in, in just a little bit. Um, unfortunately, my my cabin shadows for this view don't play a huge part of it, but they may definitely play a big part of, of your building. Okay, so you just kind of have to have to analyze that. All right, and the last one we're going to go ahead and place in is our sketchy lines. Okay. And that's going to be this guy. Not nearly as sketchy as it looks inside Photoshop. That's the way it always is. That's something to keep in mind. That's just part of the export, the export process for from, from SketchUp into Photoshop. All right, so same thing. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the blending mode to multiply. Now, I'm going to turn off shadows for now. You guys may run into a time when you realize that your, your lines inside either your elevation or your SketchUp Oh, I'm sorry, your elevation or your section are too light. Uh, what's something that you might do to really make those the line work pop? And this and there's a couple ways that you could do this. What's one way that we can maybe like you know double or triple opacity. the thickness of what was that? Opacity. Opacity. Yeah. That will lighten them. I mean if the opacity is down, then yes, you could bring them, but you won't be able to bring the opacity to over a hundred, so that, that won't help you. Okay. Any other ideas on how we might make the line work? We might, we might boost up the line work. A double layer, exactly. That's that's one of the ways. Okay, so right now you can see that actually by adding the sketchy line that did help quite a bit. But if we go over to that sketchy line and we duplicate the layer, notice that that got a, you know a little bit darker. So that's one way to obtain you know a nice, a quick, easy way to to boost that line work, okay? I'm just gonna turn that off for now. I may actually come back and end up using that once we, we get to the end, okay? So we got all of our, all of our layers uh, overlapped, so we're gonna go ahead and very similar to when we did the elevation, we're gonna go ahead and create our ground plane, okay? The ground plane will be very similar to the elevation, but uh, we are cutting a section, so we are cutting uh, we are cutting through the foundation as well. So that is the one thing that's a little bit different that we will add to the section that we didn't have in the elevation. Okay, so I'm going to create a new layer and we're going to go ahead and call this ground plane. Okay, and I'm going to use my, I'm going to use my lasso tool kind of like we did last time and I'm going to draw my ground plane like so. If you're a little bit off, that's okay. We can fix that in a second. Okay, so, oh shoot. All right, so we're gonna make that a little bit of a hill. We're gonna go all the way around our sheet. 
Do 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 do. You know what that was too? Yeah. yeah, gosh, my little brother watched that all the time. I still hum it. It's been stuck in my head for 15 years. All right, so that gives us our ground plane. Okay, it's a little bit off uh, right here below the house. That's okay. We're going to fix that here in just a second. Okay, so we're then going to click on our brush tool and let's make our brush a little bit bigger. Uh, we're going to go ahead and leave it black. I'm going to click on my ground plane layer. Let's make it even bigger. And we can go ahead and fill this in. Again, if you want this to be black or you want this to be gray or a color, that's completely up to you. Okay? So I'm going to make it black for now. All right? I'm going to go ahead and deselect. All right? And then from here, I'm going to use my rectilinear marquee tool. And I'll go ahead and start that right here below my building. All right? And I'm going to bring it all the way over to where it eventually meets the ground plane. Okay? Actually, I'm going to bring it to right at the edge of my wall. Okay, and same thing like before, we can go ahead and click on our brush tool and I could fill that in. That's going to give us the kind of the foundation, okay, because we're not going to see the grass below the building because we're cutting through the building and not, uh, and not in front of the building, okay. We have one more little oopsie daisy, which is this little area right over here. So I'm going to click on my marquee tool again and we'll just fill that in. Okay, easy fix brush and good all right still a tiny little weird little thing going on there but we'll fix that with the grass okay from here I'm going to use my I'm going to use my magic wand tool I'm going to click on my original background layer let's go ahead and layer from background so that we can make this an editable layer should we need to make some tweaks to it okay and then I'm going to select all of the areas of my line drawing that I'm cutting through. So just like we did for the floor plan, we're gonna go ahead and poche all of the items that are being cut through, okay? So that's gonna be that beam, that's gonna be the window structure, my wall structure. Uh, it looks like this wall right here. A couple of these little elements. A roof. And a couple of these little guys over here. Oops. Okay, so we have all of our cut items selected. Again, I can go over to my, my brush tool. I'm going to go ahead and fill them in. Okay, so we're going to make them all black. Looks like we forgot one. Let's fix that. And let's see, where's my brush tool? There we go. All right, so there we go. We have our ground plane and we have all of our all of our items that need to be pocheted all filled in. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add our grass. All right. And then I'm going to show you how to soften this black if you should you want to make it a different color uh, later on down the road. The nice thing about creating it black from the beginning, it's very easy to change the black to any color of uh, any, any color between white and black. So any any type of gray you can get from black. But by creating it a, uh, you know, maybe a nice soft gray or even a medium gray, it's a lot harder to get it to be black uh, quickly, okay? Uh, the other thing that you could have done is also done a fill layer, and that's, that's another easy way to uh, have changed this. Although the fill layer won't work well when you do the clone stamp. So it's just something to keep in mind, all right? So clicking on the ground plane layer, I can then go back to our clone stamp tool. It looks like the grass, I think, is already selected, being that... Probably the other teacher did the exact same thing this morning. All right, so we can go ahead and select a size of our grass. Uh, let's just see how big this is first. This is actually pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and work with this. So I'm gonna go and bring that grass right up to the edge of our building, okay? That will give it the impression that the building is on a slab but it's not being cut in front of the building like we originally did it for the elevation. Okay, so pardon me for a sec while I while I finish this. Whoops, got a little crazy there. Yes, it's windy. Another thing that you can actually do to even give this a little bit more pop 
is you might do the entire uh, both left and right side using uh, one size and then you might bump it up a little bit and add you know a little bit of you know larger and smaller uh, grasses as well. I'll refresh you on how to do that here in just a sec. All right, almost done. Gosh, I wish I know how to. I wish I knew how to do this when I was in college. I was not very good at Photoshop when I was in college. And then you kind of get forced to learn it eventually in your career. All right, so I can then go up to the size. I'm going to maybe make this like 200. Okay. Maybe we just put in a couple little flakes of some of the larger grass just to give it a little bit more texture, a little bit more life. Okay, so maybe, maybe something kind of like that. All right, so from there I'm going to, uh, let's say we want to change the color of the gray a little bit, okay? Or I'm sorry, the ground plane. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go up to layer. You're gonna add an adjustment layer and we're gonna go to uh, hue and saturation, okay? We're gonna add the hue and saturation layer and uh, I'm going to do my control alt, what's the letter? G, right, control alt G. We're gonna apply that to just the ground plane and then if you wanna make it lighter or darker, you can adjust the uh, lightness scale under hue and saturation, okay? So here, notice that Oh, did I put my, I did put my poche on layer zero. Darn it. All right, well, I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it black, but I think ideally I would like it a little bit darker. I just realized that I put my, my poche on the wrong layer. So I'll go back and fix that in a little bit. I'm gonna leave this black for now, and then when I'm all done, I'll, I'll make that adjustment. Okay, but that is gonna be how you would do that. Ideally though, uh, I would want my poche and my ground plane on the, on the same layer so that they all get lighter or darker at the same time, okay? So next, we're going to need to add a background, okay? So just like we did for the elevations, we can go over to Creative Commons and let's find a background image for our, for our cabin. You guys could use the same background image as you did for your elevations if you want. You could find a new one completely up to, up to you, okay? Sometimes it's kind of fun to find find a nice a nice fresh new background image. You might find something with like a really cool sunset, maybe some deer or something in it. You never know. Just something that gives it some uh, some nice life. Okay, uh, let's see which one would work good. Let's. That's not bad. The grass is a little bit long for what I want to show. This is actually pretty good. Let's do this one right here. Grass is about the, is near the same length. Yeah, the trees there. And you have a nice little tree in the background, which is which is kind of nice. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to uh, download this photo. Ooh, you know what? It's just something that I'm noticing. The original size is 1280 by 960. That's gonna be a pretty small image for what we're working on. So I am unfortunately gonna skip it. I can tell that once I bring it in, uh, it won't be the clearest image, okay? So I don't want my background to be uh, choppy. Uh, maybe this one right here, that's not bad. Grass is a little bit tall. Let's use this one right here. This is actually one we used in a, in a previous, uh, previous exercise, but this is a good image. So we're gonna to go to uh, download, nice large image, this is good. There's a nice clear shadow, which is nice, which is actually, I think how I exported my shadows, although I don't think I'm gonna end up showing them, but that is how I believe that they were exported. Okay, so we're gonna go to File, Place, and bring in our background image, so File, Place, and we're going to, let's see, go over to SketchUp, oh, I'm sorry, Desktop, click on that image that will bring it in uh, it's already nice it's actually almost the entire size of the image which is nice 
I'm gonna go ahead and make this larger to scale. So I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna make it larger. No need to try to show the entire image, okay? Remember that it's always a good idea to try to line up the ground planes, okay? So I'm going to click, I'm gonna click on my blending mode, turn it to multiply, all right, so that I can see all of the layers activated in my scene. Perfect. What did I just do? Oh, I changed my blending mode. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of, let's see, I keep changing my blending mode. There we go. I'm going to bring it up just a little bit so that I have my, so that I have my, let's see, get my ground planes lined up. Okay, so it's going to be something like that, maybe a little bit taller. Okay, so maybe it's something kind of about like that. That looks good. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that as is. I'm going to lock this layer so that it doesn't move on me. Okay, so let's see, where did my lock go? All right, so we're gonna lock that layer and we can go ahead and turn off the background temporarily. Let's turn off our ground plane as well. We're gonna click on layer zero. We're gonna use our magic wand. We're gonna go ahead and select everything on the outside of our, of our house. From there, we can turn the background on and we're gonna go ahead and rasterize this layer. Actually, it's already rasterized, Never mind. Is it? Yeah, I think it already. Yeah, it is. It actually is. It actually is good. Oh no, it's locked. That's why I can't. That's why I can't rasterize it. Okay, so I'm gonna rasterize the layer so that I can make some edits to it. I'm then gonna go ahead and go down with the background of or all the area around the building selected. I can go ahead and then add a layer. Ooh, I just thought of one important thing. So, in this, in my particular view. Uh, the room on the left hand side uh, has windows okay so the actual entire front of my cabin is, is windows and what I'm seeing in the background uh, are windows so I would actually see what I'm seeing back here through those windows so I'm going to uh, with my magic wand tool uh, and my layer zero selected all right, I can turn off the background layer just to make this a little bit clear I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm also going to select those windows, okay? So I can then go and turn my background on and I can go over and click on add layer mask. Whoops, sorry, I forgot to select my, my background layer. Okay, so with the background layer selected, I can click on add layer mask, okay? That looks good. Notice that I can see uh, the objects in the background through my windows. So that's a nice way to add a nice realistic effect. Okay, I can then turn on my ground plane. All right, although I'm going to leave it off just for a few minutes just to kind of be a little bit easier to see. And let's look at how we can add a little bit more pop to our scene. Okay, so I'm going to need to apply some texture and some materials to the inside. I'm also going to apply, you know, some kind of a haze or if something to kind of soften the windows so that what it looks like over here is not the same as right here okay so that it, you know you can tell that you're looking through something all right so i'm going to go back to layer zero i'm going to select those windows okay i'm going to create a new layer for this i'm going to move it in front of my background so that whatever i place is in front of the window okay i'm going to call this layer uh we'll call this glazing Okay, and with glazing selected, I'm going to go over to my, my brush tool and I'm gonna select a color. I'm going to maybe select, uh, I'm gonna select a blue, but maybe kind of a gray with just a little hint of blue, okay? So something kind of, maybe kind of like that, okay? And then from there, with my glazing layer selected, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in that glass, okay? I'm gonna do Control D to deselect that. And then I'm going to reduce the opacity to really soften that, okay? So maybe it's something, you know, kind of, kind of like that. I want it just a little bit different than the outside. On the screen here, you can't really see it much here. Maybe we'll bump it up to about 50. That looks, that looks not too bad. 
okay? So now it kind of looks like we're looking through the glass, okay? So that's one little effect that you can do. The next thing that I'm gonna ask myself is uh, what color are some of the elements in my interior, okay? Uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to maybe fill in the mullions around my glazing. So you might have kind of a silver tone for the mullions. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my magic wand, select my layer zero. Uh, I'm gonna turn off my sketchy lines just for now. They're just a little distracting. So I can see nice, nice crisp line work. Okay, so I'm gonna select that glazing. Uh, I'm gonna say maybe my door frames are the same color. So I can try to tackle a couple different things here. I can't remember, that actually might be a window. Whatever, we'll say it's a door. Because I want it to be a door. All right, uh, let's see, we also have some mullions up here. We also have some mullions over here. Okay, and I think this back part right here, that would probably all be wood or whatever this roof material is. Okay, maybe my trim down at the bottom is also that same color. Okay, looks like we have a couple more things over here. Let's select my door frame, my last little piece of trim, and my mullions, okay? I'm gonna create actually a fill layer for this, okay? The reason why I'm gonna do a fill layer is so that I can adjust the color uh, later if I want to. As you guys start to add materials to the inside, you might realize like maybe those colors I put in there initially aren't really that good once you kind of see what the other materials are. All right, so I'm gonna to go to new fill layer, solid color, and I'm gonna call this uh, mullions trim. And I'm gonna hit okay. All right, it go ahead, it, the first thing that it does, it fills it into that color that I filled or that I made my windows. I'm gonna make it, yeah, maybe something that kind of a lot, kind of like that. I think that looks pretty good. I may change my mind though, we'll see. All right, so that's gonna be my mullion. I'll do one more texture for you just to kind of show you how to do it. Uh, and then I'll let you guys go ahead and take off. I think you guys, not take off, sorry, you have to stay here. <laughs> but you can take off on working on your project, okay? <laughs> so let's say the interior of my building, uh, I'm gonna say that my walls are gonna be brick, okay? So I think I already have a texture saved for this, but just like last class, I'm gonna go ahead and tile that brick texture in the inside of my building. So I'm gonna do file place. Let's go to my thumb drive. Go to today's class, textures. I think one of these is brick. Let's just see. Of course it's not brick. Well, we know where to look to find a brick texture. Let's go to our favorite website, Creative Commons. I think, I, I know so many people that use this now because I actually didn't know about it before I came to DVC and everyone I know uses this because you just get nice, really high quality images all the time versus Google, you just never know what you're going to get. You might get a tiny little thumbnail. You might get something that's huge. So I'm going to type in, uh, let's see, seamless brick texture. Okay, remember seamless will give us nice textures that don't. Uh, oh, let's use this gray brick. That's actually kind of nice. That goes with our with our mullion color. Okay, so let's download this. We're going to go download photo original. I'm, I'm gonna no. This is I think this was big. I guess we'll find out in a second. We'll see if it's blurry. I'll put that in my thumb drive. That'll be a, that'll be a good one to save. Okay. So we're gonna go to file place. Place that brick into my scene. That looks pretty good. Uh, when we import a texture, what's the first question we want to ask ourselves? What, what my what? What can I what am I gonna do? Uh, that is that is true. So where are you going to put it? What's another thing you need to think about? Scale. scale of the texture. Okay. So if you don't know the scale of a texture, quick Google search will do it. Okay. What's the size of a brick? If you really have to, you can count the number of bricks and scale it proportionately or ask someone uh, just so that you don't have super big bricks or uh, super tiny bricks. These are probably a little bit small. I'm going to guess maybe about, eh, maybe about, maybe about that size. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that. I'm gonna move this brick texture. I'm gonna call this brick texture. I'm gonna move this to the top above my glazing. Okay, and I'm gonna tile this on my interior. So I'm gonna do maybe one about right there. 
Luckily, this is a nice big image. I only need to tile this probably one time. And I'm gonna move this over and let it connect. Notice that that connects with no seam, okay? So that's the beauty of searching for a, a seamless texture, okay? Is that it looks natural. All right, so I'm gonna combine these two, merge the layers so that they become one. I'm gonna hide them for just a second. I'm gonna go back to my layer zero. I'm gonna select the surfaces that I want to obtain this brick texture, okay? So I think it's gonna be basically this area and all of the area in between my doors, okay? All right. Brick it's gonna be brick. Sure, why not? I might hate it in a second, who knows? We'll, we'll see. All right, so I'm gonna turn that brick back on. We're gonna select that brick texture and as we think we all know, we're gonna add our layer mask, okay? So that adds the nice brick to the interior. If you wanna soften it a little bit, remember that you can always just adjust the opacity, okay? So maybe my brick wants to just be a little bit softer, maybe something about like that, okay? And uh, I'm pretty happy with that, okay? I won't add colors to the rest of this yet. I'll go ahead and just do it uh, while you guys are working and then I'll show you guys the final image shortly. All right, let's do one more thing is we need to add a object for scale, okay? Always good to have an object for scale in, in everything, whether it be a floor plan. Uh, actually, floor plans, you don't always need it because you have things like doors that provide objects for scale. Human but figure. I'm sorry? Human figure. Yeah, human figure. So that's that's what we're gonna do. So we, should, we, we have all uh, already cropped some uh, people of images, okay? We've all, we've all isolated people people images okay you can also just find them on on google relatively easy okay so i'm going to go to file place i think i already have a couple saved on my thumb drive of course i do i know i do 16b and oh do i not oh my gosh <laughs> let's see somewhere i have an image of a person. Okay, maybe I don't have an image of a person. Yeah, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use Google this time. Uh, let's see, person, PNG. Okay, we'll find one relatively easy. Which guy looks like he belongs inside Yosemite? Probably not the guy in a suit. Okay. Uh, which one? Where's dog? This guy? Yeah, yeah, he looks like he could be in Yosemite. He's out for a little walk. I don't think all these corporate people probably belong in Yosemite, so we'll leave them out. May you change the tools to large? Uh, yes, you could. You could change this tools. You, can, you could click on tools and go to large. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I noticed that the pe person with the dog is actually pretty large. So that will work. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. View image, right click, save image as. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and go file place. Bring that person in. Yay. And I'm gonna place them over here just for the time being. I think they're probably gonna be a little bit out of scale, but before I adjust that, I'm gonna turn my ground plane back on. Okay, we're gonna wanna move the, or move these people behind the ground plane, okay? Because we don't want, oh, let's see. What did I just do? Why is that on? Did I change the blending mode? No. Let's rasterize the layer. Okay, there we go, just in the wrong order. Always good to just check the order of the objects that are in your scene, okay? So I'm gonna go to Control T. Uh, Control T will allow me to transform and manipulate this a little bit. This may not actually be the best image just because of the way that the dogs are situated, okay? I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit, eh, about like that for now. Probably not the best image. I can go ahead and fix it in just a little bit, okay? But that does provide us uh, some kind of a visual cue that tells us scale, okay? So when I place the person next to the door, he's still a little bit tall. So let's make him about that size, okay? Unfortunately, his, his pups are gonna be 
cropped out of of my view temporarily. I know. I love animals. I got dogs and cats. Probably have a few rats too. No, I'm kidding. I don't have any rats. All right. So there's a person. I'm not. I'm. I'm truly not a fan of them. But I'm not going to make you watch me. Uh, find a different one. Okay, so let's do one more thing before we call this good. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to think about how the light enters the space. Okay, so we can use things like the dodge and burn tool to accentuate some of our shadows. Okay, so don't forget that we have that. You can use that for both the elevations, floor plans, and for, for sections. Okay, so dodge and burn works great. Uh, another tool that you can use is uh, we're going to start by creating a new layer. I'm going to call this. Um, I'm going to call this sunlight. Okay, and you might use uh, your polygonal lasso tool. So I'm going to go ahead or polygonal lasso tool. All right, and knowing that this is my window right here, I'm going to go ahead and cast kind of a beam of light into my space. Okay, so I'm going to say something maybe about like that. All right, I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to trace the edges of my space. Come on, zoom in. All right, so I'm going to trace the edges of my space to allow myself to fill this little area with some sunlight. Okay, so I've created a marquee. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over to my next windows. Okay, so I have a window up here in my in this uh, um, below my roof okay so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna hold down shift so that I don't lose my other marquee and I'm gonna start here and maybe let's see question is is how big of a shadow does that cast it's supposed to be the same angle, right? yeah it does want to be the same angle absolutely and the reality of this window is you probably wouldn't get a ton of I mean it's gonna get sunlight but it's not gonna get direct Sun because we have uh, because we have the the overhang above but yes we do want it to be about the same angle maybe we do it about like that okay same thing we're gonna fill this up okay so that gives us the other one and oh actually you know what our Sun is coming from this other direction darn it all right, well, we're going we're gonna to pretend it's coming from this direction. All right, I think that's pretty good. There's not going to be sun coming in from over here. You would still have some soft light, so you might consider maybe doing a separate one. But let's go ahead and use our paintbrush tool again. So I'm going to use paintbrush. And with the sunlight layer selected, I'm going to change the color to maybe a kind of a yellowy gray. Okay, so maybe something kind of like that. And I'm going to fill this in. Okay. And I'm going to deselect. And I'm going to change this uh, opacity to something really light. I'm thinking like 15%. Just enough that you can just barely see that little hint of yellow. Okay. All right. It's just enough that you can barely see that. Okay. And if you want to take it a step further, you could create another one called the sunlight two. Okay. Sunlight two. And I'm going to go ahead and create another one over here about the same angle. Maybe it's about like that. All right, we're gonna fill that in with selecting that layer. I can go to my brush. We're gonna fill that in and we're gonna make this even lighter than we did the other one. So the first sunlight layer we made 14%, maybe we make this like 10%, okay? And the last thing that you could do, notice that we have uh, a very straight and rigid line for our for our sunlight okay so what's something that we could do to kind of soften that a little bit there's a couple ways you could do this too so there's multiple correct answers you could uh, you could use a yeah you could kind of use you might be able to use a dodge and burn what I'm gonna use is I'm going to 
Uh, I'm going to use my eraser, okay? So I'm going to select my uh, my first sunlight. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger or a little bit brighter just so that you guys can see it, okay? And I'm going to go up to my eraser. I'm going to make the size of the eraser uh, a lot larger, and I'm going to change the hardness to zero, and I'm going to make my brush something that has some nice uh, kind of gradient to it, okay? So I'm going to click the soft round tool. Let's make this even bigger. Okay. And then now, notice that when I click on the edges that I kind of, I'm getting rid of that real rigid line on the edge. Okay. So I'm getting rid of that rigid line. And you might also start to get rid of some of the yellow at the farthest end of the shadow, okay? So you can start to kind of basically give a gradient to uh, the light that's coming inside the layer or the room, okay? So same thing over on this side. I'm just gonna soften this edge. You know, something kind of, kind of like that, okay? Sunlight two. All right, any questions at all? Any questions? Good, so this is kind of our, here's kind of our finished product, you know? There's still a few things that I'm gonna do to make this, uh, to liven this up just a little bit, okay? I'm gonna add some texture and some color to my beams around it, maybe a nice like red red beam or something to make that pop. But other than that, that's, that's the goal of this exercise, okay? You might even consider cropping it. We don't really need uh, this much ground plane, okay? So I'm just gonna crop this to maybe about like, about like that, all right? If you go up to edit, let's see. If you go up to uh, image, you could go to canvas size. And I'm gonna click on this bottom anchor all right, and by doing that, I'm going to increase the height. I'm gonna say from 25 to 30 inches, and I'm gonna hit okay. Notice that uh, I got more canvas out of this, all right? So I got more canvas on the top, and if I go back to my, my background layer and I click on my layer mask, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the top of this so that I get a little bit more mountain and less, or I'm sorry, a little bit more sky and mountain, okay? So I'm gonna go over to my brush tool. Oops, let's change this to white. Remember, white will fill it back. Ugh. Why is that not working? I'm seeing it on my... Uh, no, why is that not working? Glazing. Nope. It's funny because I could see it in my thumbnail as going away. But why did that not come back? That should come back. Let me let me investigate this just for a second. I wonder if it's because of this. Nope. Okay, I'll come back to that. But that, that gives you the point. All I was basically trying to do was get rid of a little bit of the ground plane and just see a little bit more of my image that I knew I stretched uh, I stretched over the top of my of my of my image. So that's about it. Let's go ahead and take a 10 minute break. All right, and we'll come back and we'll finish doing the portfolio reviews and you guys can continue working on portfolios and our assignments, all right? Let's see, where did my...